basically to uh, land reform lies in urban areas. Uh, I don't think rural areas are going to uh, really uh, change much in the way of uh, the standard of living of South Africans. But if for a moment we can turn to, uh, to rural areas and maybe meet uh, our opponents in their narrative just for a brief moment. Um, so in March 2018 at the Gibbs Land Forum, the Mineral Minister, Guere Mantache, uh, talked about him owning a 500-hectare a farm and complained about the fact that his smallest neighbor owned a 4,000-hectare farm. Um, and he, he, he was talking about demystifying the notion that small farms cannot be productive, which I think is a very reasonable point. But in so doing, he criticized this phenomenon of mega farming. And by saying that, I took him to mean that it's a problem that increasingly more and more land is ending up in the hands of fewer and fewer big farmers, which I, I see the point that that may be a problem. But it is unfortunate that Mantashe has thrown his weight behind the policy of expropriation of outcompensation when an easy and non-destructive solution to the problem that he has identified is ready and available, and I'll get to that in a moment. So Section 25 uh, five of the Constitution mandates that government take reasonable legislative measures to enable citizens to gain access to land on an equitable basis. So this section is fundamentally what I want to talk about here today, and I think it is also fundamentally what Monta Montache and the government uh, think that their program of expropriation without compensation needs to achieve. Uh, but little does it seem the government realizes that they are enforcing pieces of legislation that actively uh, stands in the way of achieving this equitable um, access to land. And, and I think it undermines government's own stated opposition to so-called mega farming. And the Subdivision of Agricultural Land Act uh, is one of, those, um, one, of the, one of those statutes that does do that. <clears throat> So it was passed in 1970, uh, at the height of apartheid, as you would know, uh, ostensibly to ensure that valuable agricultural land is not allocated for residential specifically or other purposes uh, other than agriculture. Uh, so, but a more nefarious uh, potential purpose of the act uh, was to prohibit farmers from selling off their land to poor white farmers, uh, known then as bayvoners, uh, as they were called, uh, which might have competed with neighboring big uh, commercial farmers at the time. So the Act provides that owners of agricultural land may not subdivide their, their agricultural property without going through an elaborate bureaucracy and getting permission from the Minister of Agriculture. So let's pause for a moment here at this notion of getting permission from government. The rule of law is a founding value of, of, um, of South Africa, as uh, Candace mentioned with one of the cases. Uh, and Section 1C of the Constitution provides that South Africa is founded upon the supremacy of the Constitution and the rule of law, which is also the title of the book that I'm working on. But for those of you familiar with the concept of the rule of law, you know it is essentially an aversion to arbitrariness, the notion that society should be governed by law and not by the whims of man. Um, and this means where legislation assigns discretionary powers to officials in government, that power must not be absolute, it cannot be absolute legally, and must be constrained by clear and substantive criteria. These criteria would enable people in society with reasonable certainty to know exactly what decisions government will come to and modify their behavior accordingly, which is the point of law, uh, to modify your behavior. So without criteria, an official has been given uh, the discretionary power in question can effectively base their decision on anything. Uh, from ideology to the breakfast that they had that morning. So they can approve the permits or applications of people or businesses that they like, and they can reject the permits or applications of people or businesses that they dislike. They can refuse to renew permits, uh, renew permits because of political considerations or some other nefarious or malicious factor. Above all, these officials may solicit bribes and, favor, and other favors in exchange for treating businesses or specific businesses or individual, individuals favorably. So unconstrained discretionary powers are, in many ways, and perhaps the, it's the only uh, reason, the root of government corruption in every society, and especially in South Africa, as we would know. And the South African government, of course, has not adhered to this standard of the rule of law in any way, shape, or form, despite the fact that it is explicitly... Uh, enjoined to them by the Constitution. So out of 31 statutes analyzed by the Free Market Foundation's Rule of Law Project, which, with which I'm very involved, a lone singular statute qualified as compliant with the imperatives of the rule of law. And if there's any doubt, the Subdivision of Agricultural Land Act 
most assuredly does not qualify as a, a rule of law compliant statute. It is one of the 30 other statutes that fall foul of our founding values. So the act allows the minister in his discretion, in his discretion, to refuse any application for subdivision or to grant an application subject to any conditions the minister deems fit, deems fit. Those conditions may be varied by the government in the government's discretion as well at any time. And this means that the government has an absolute discretion, a power practically exempt from the sovereignty of law that we claim to adhere to in South Africa. Ordinary officials who have been appointed by the minister hold in their hands the power of telling taxpaying, job-creating South Africans that they, what they may and may not do with their property. Because subjectively, for whatever reason, this bureaucrat in question does not think it's a good idea, uh, any reason. Another problem with the notion of having to get permission from government to subdivide one's land is that it's a fallacy to suppose that a group of central planners in Pretoria uh, are at all qualified to decide what sizes of agricultural property are so-called viable. In the Soviet Union, for example, backyard produce gardens were often far more productive than large state-owned public farms uh, because the profit motive and the incentive to develop one's own, one own, one's own property is a powerful motivating force, as uh, all of us here would know today. The proper place for the decision of when a farm is or is not viable is a market, uh, should be make, made at the marketplace. Uh, bureaucratic in intervention is unnecessary. Indeed, it stands to reason that officials are less likely to make correct decisions than those living uh, whose livelihoods and assets are at risk as a result of the, the, um, the decision. So the prohibition on subdivision means that no small or more affordable uh, parcels of land can be sold to farm workers, uh, uh, farm tenants, or local communities unless one applies to the minister. In other words, the act actively prohibits the private sector from engaging in land reform, and then government has the goal to turn around and accuse the private sector of not transforming quickly enough. If, if subdivision is permitted more freely, existing landowners will be able to endow their tenant farmers with land in ownership by mutual agreement. So it's the law that victimizes labor tenants, not the farmers. Uh, so for historically disadvantaged South Africans, it is said, but it may be true, that a large supply of lands in small and affordable units is urgently needed, uh, the land hunger that is talked about. So repealing the Subdivision Act would be an, a, a practical and cost-free way for government of making vast quantities of land rapidly available. Should the act persist in operation, its provision, provisions entrench the phenomenon of mega farming, despite government's stated opposition to this phenomenon. It, it fundamentally destroys any notion of ownership of agricultural property. If you need government's permission to subdivide and sell or lease portions of your own property, you are not truly the owner in any real sense. But this is characteristic of most apartheid property laws, uh, none of which respected private property rights. There was a reason for hope after apartheid ended uh, that government would abandon this anti-property rights thinking. Uh, uh, so in government's um, first post-apartheid uh, land policy green paper, the Agriculture and Land Department made the following declarations about the Subdivision Act. It said, Subdivision restrictions create rigidities uh, that increase the cost of adapting to changing market conditions. Farms have areas that are less in intensively used for agricultural purposes, and these areas have potential for resettlement and smaller and less intensive farms. The land market is inflexible, and landowners need greater flexibility to dispose of less intensively used portions of farms. It said, laws prohibiting Subdivision prevented the price of underused land from falling towards its low use value and prevent the realization of low prices through the land market. So government tried to follow through with its policy to repeal the act in 1998 when it passed the Subdivision of Agricultural Land Repeal Act through Parliament. The act, however, um, says that it will only become effective on a date proclaimed by the president and this has never happened since 1998. So while formally repealed, the Subdivision Act still remains in force. And recent administrations, very worryingly, have completely misinterpreted this state of affairs. Uh, so Parliament, as of 2016 at least, is sitting on a bill that has been doing the round since 2013, which is the earliest I could see. Uh, it is called the Preservation and Development of Agricultural Land Bill, which, if finally passed, uh, I hope not, intends to replace the Subdivision Act with an even more onerous dra draconian subdivision regime. It is worse than the problem it se seeks to fi fix. So in the 1990s, government wanted to repeal the Subdivision Act so as to allow market forces to operate freely to the benefit of rural communities. In other words, the act was not to be replaced. And if you read uh, parliamentary minutes from that time and, and from the government, 
it was clear that they intended the market to replace the act, not another act, which government now seems intent on doing. So between the current subdivision act and the proposed preservation and development of agricultural land bill, I think we're better off with the former, not with the latter. So we should insist that the act be repealed and not replaced. Thus, we are presented with a solution to the problem of rural land reform. The Subdivision Act must be got rid of to enable farmers to sell smaller portions of their land. How one deals with one's property is a decision for the owner and not for the government. I think many of us here would agree with that notion. And uh, that is certainly why we do not want to see this act replaced, only repealed. I therefore hope the President spares the time to proclaim the Subdivision Act officially inoperative and leaves it at that soon. I thank you for your time. Uh, thanks uh, to Martin. Let's take, uh, we can take two questions for Martin. Any questions from the floor? No questions for him. Let's maybe take questions from, for any of the three uh, speakers that we just had for this session.